Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 219 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I want to talk about some emerging information that is crucial for anyone on Dupixin or even considering the medication to hear about. The reason is that in about 10% of people who try Dupixin, even those using it for topical steroid withdrawal, may develop a red face, neck, and upper chest area that can be very inflamed, scaly, dry, and itchy. Everywhere else will likely look good in terms of your skin, but this particular area becomes a real problem. Cases have been reported online, but no one really had any idea what was causing certain individuals to develop this weird reaction until now. And wow, this is really going to blow your mind. Before we get into exactly what the issue is here, I want to share a story with you of how I came to discover this issue. So a wonderful client of mine had been incredibly miserable with TSW for a while, and she was seeking some relief so that she could be a better mom to her kids. And I know for many of you out there have gone through this, you can completely relate to that. So her and I discussed starting Dupixent and discussing it with her dermatologist to see if it could help lower the severity of her symptoms. But we didn't anticipate that she'd end up with a bright red, inflamed, and itchy face, neck, and chest, while everything else seemed to clear up. Her prescribing dermatologist was completely stumped and wasn't sure what was going on. My client shared her concerns that it could possibly be coming from Dupixent from what she had read online. So her doctor stopped her on the medication. A few weeks later, her doctor returned from a medical conference and mentioned to my client that information was presented at this conference that her face and neck flare up could be connected to a fungal problem, but the doctor refused to treat her since she had stopped Dupixent. This information was relayed to me via my client, and of course, I started searching for research online all about this. Turns out that a few papers had already popped up on this topic known more formally as dupilumab facial redness or DFR. And for those of you who are like dupilumab, what the heck is that? That's the more like technical term for dupixent. One research letter published in September 2019 in JAMA Dermatology mentions that the new occurrence of head-neck dermatitis in some dupixent users could be due to a potential activation of the TH17 pathway that allows for the proliferation of malassezia and thus an increasing severity of what would later become known as DFR. Another paper published in October 2019 in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology details the exact issue in two cases where the patients became sensitized to malassezia. The one patient was found to have an, quote, elevated serum level of malassezia-specific immunoglobulin E, end quote. Treatment in both of these cases was, quote, oral itraconazole, 200 milligrams once daily, end quote, for one month. Then Dr. Julie Greenberg, one of my favorite guests here on the Healthy Skin Show, gave a presentation at the Integrative Dermatology Symposium 2021, mentioning the connection between dupilumab facial redness and malassezia. For practitioners out there, you can likely find her presentation called Yeasty Beastie, Malassezia in Skin Disease and an Integrative Approach to Treatment on the Learn Skin platform. Now, you might recall that Dr. Julie Greenberg came on the show to discuss malassezia in episode 173 and its role in chronic skin problems. I highly recommend that you check that episode out, but as a quick refresher to help you just connect some of the dots here, Malassezia is a commensal fungal organism that lives within the skin microbiome. So yes, it is a fungus. And that is one reason why this is so significant. 
Now, upon arriving home from the conference, I found yet another paper on this published in Dermatologic Therapy in September 2021 called Dupilumab Facial Redness, Clinical Characteristics and Proposed Treatment in a Cohort. And subsequently, this study was reported on Dermatology Advisor. To briefly summarize, researchers reviewed 101 eczema patients for dupilumab facial redness and found that 13 of the patients fit the criteria and were subsequently treated for hypersensitivity to malassezia. They used 200 milligrams of oral fluconazole weekly along with a topical antifungal for four weeks. One person required a second round of meds, which was 100 milligrams of itraconazole daily for a month. And unfortunately, about half of the group seemed to relapse after approximately three months' time. I have my own thoughts on why that may happen, but I'm going to keep that to myself for right now because at the moment... I think it's crucial that I point out that I'm not saying with 100% certainty that if you develop dupilumab facial redness, that you absolutely have a fungal overgrowth. I think that's an important point here because at this time, when the episode is published, there's simply not enough research out there on this topic, especially considering that dupilumab facial redness was never described or mentioned in the Dupixent clinical trials for the FDA, which is rather surprising considering that it seems to impact around 10% of patients. But more research and papers are coming out pointing in this direction which is why I wanted to create this episode and its corresponding show notes with all of the current research so you now have something to bring to your prescribing doctor. There is a real chance that they have no idea about this research and papers published connecting dots between malassezia, hypersensitivity, and Dupixent. I asked a rep from Dupixent about this problem at the Integrative Dermatology Symposium 2021. And she didn't have any answers for me about it and said she'd refer my question to their team of experts who I might hear back from. Well, it's now two weeks later upon the date of this episode publishing, and I've never heard from anyone who works for Dupixent to answer my questions. So rather than holding my breath, I'd prefer to educate you on the issue so that you can seek help with proof of current research in hand linked within the show notes. All right, so go through the show notes. You'll look at the bottom. You'll see the references section. That's where all of the links are. Your prescribing doctor is the point person who needs to be notified and shown this information so that you can hopefully get an appropriate treatment if this is happening to you. And perhaps your doctor can even run testing for that serum malassezia specific immunoglobulin E to help identify what's going on rather than just assume you're sensitive to the medication itself. So if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this, or you want to see the resources that I've put together for you, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 219 so we can keep the conversation going. And I invite you to share this episode in eczema Facebook groups, TSW Facebook groups with anyone who may be struggling with this new onset of symptoms after beginning Dupixent so that they can bring this information along with these references, right? We always need to show research to our doctors to help them understand that this is not just a one-off situation. You're not making random requests. It's based off of something. And that way that hopefully whoever is dealing with it, whether it's you or someone you know, you can get the treatment you need to help you on your healing journey. And before I sign off, as always, I would deeply appreciate it if you take a moment to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform. Make sure then to hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a weekly dose of our tips, the research that I share, patient and client stories, inspiration, and alternative strategies to help you rebuild healthy skin. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.